Hey guys, welcome to another JavaScript challenge. And this particular challenge will be a doozy because our function will test for prime numbers. As always, if you want to solve this challenge yourself, just pause the video and resume once you are ready to compare the results. So prime number and each and every time, whenever you're going to be dealing with something math related in your challenge, it's probably a wise option to figure out, well, what it is as far as math is concerned. So what do we mean by when we say, okay, so we're going to be testing for the prime number? Well, the prime number essentially is a number that we can only divide evenly if we divide this number by itself or by one. So let's say number 11, which by the way, I was going to give you a hint that this is a prime number. Try finding a number that you can divide 11 by and you're going to get a even result. So let's say two would be 5.5. So that's not even. So you would need even again. Three would be the same scenario four, five, six and seven. So what we're having at the end is that we can only divide this evenly if we divide this by one or actually by the number itself, the number 11. We can also figure this out if we're just going to go ahead and do a quick Google search. And you can read here the official actually function declaration or not function declaration, actually explanation where we have a prime number is a whole number greater than one whose only factors are one and itself and yada, 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 yada. Now, as you're looking, they also give you this little chart where you can see, OK, so two would be a prime number, three would be prime number, five, seven, 11, 13 and so on and so forth. Now, our job is to figure this out using the function. So what would be the first step? Well, it would be probably very easy. We're just going to say that if the number is less than two, then this will not be a prime number. So here in this case, we're going to say return false. So why we're doing that? Well, because we can see that one is not a prime number and two is a prime number. So we can check if the number is less than two, then it's definitely not a prime number. So that would be the first step. Now, the second step will be using the modulus operator. So we're going to say here modulus. Now, why we would want to use modulus operator? Because modulus operator will going to give us the remainder of the division. So I could say, OK, so if I divide 11 by two, what kind of remainder I'm going to get? Well, I'm going to be able to divide evenly up to the 10, but then I'm going to get a reminder of one. And just to show you how this basically would work. So we can say console log 11 modulus and let's just copy and paste a few times just so you can see the results. So 11 modulus two would give you a remainder of one, three would give you a remainder of two, and then four, let's say, would give you a remainder of two because we can get two even numbers of four within 11, but then we get a reminder of three. Now, the same way for dividing this, let's say by eight, so eight modulus two, this will gonna give us the remainder of zero. And the same would work obviously with eight. And we don't care much about three here, but just to give you an example that again, eight modulus three would give you two even numbers of three, and then we have a reminder of two. So the way we can set up our logic is actually very, very simple. I could just say, okay, so for loop, I'm going to start looping from number two. So let I is equal to two. And then I'm going to be looping all the way up to the number. Now, obviously, I don't want to make this equal to the number because I'm just testing all the numbers that are between two and less than that number. Because even though this will be a prime number, if it's going to be a, the actual number, it will going to return that this is obviously true. And in our case, I'm going to say less than number. Then I can say, all right, so I plus plus, so each and every iteration. And each and every time when we're going to be iterating, I could say if number modulus and that particular iteration, if this is equal to zero, meaning that if we don't get a kind of remainder, so if the remainder is zero, then I know that this is not obviously a prime number. Because like you saw with an example of 11, if I was trying to use the modulus operator, I was all the time getting some kind of remainder. 
so i could say, okay, so return false. So this particular number will not be a prime number because somewhere within this loop, we will gonna get obviously that this will be equal to zero. So that is false. And last but not least, if the number will in fact be a prime number, we will just gonna return true. So what do you see here? Well, we can probably see that is prime eight returns that this is not a prime number, which is correct. Then 11 is a prime number. 121 is not a prime number, and last but not least, 127 will be a prime number. So this probably will be the most uh, popular case that you're going to see, the most popular solution, because it's usually in everywhere as you're looking for this particular challenge. Now, let's make things a little bit interesting, because one of the problems right now is that let's say 127 is not a prime number, correct? But what we're doing is we're iterating from number two all the way to 126 just to check that. And in essence, we're unnecessarily using way too many loops than we would have to. And in fact, there is a bit of a better way how to solve this problem. Basically, much quicker where we don't need to use so many loops. Now, that better way is using what? Well, we can use a square root. Now, the main idea would be very simple. So I'm going to set up a variable and I'm going to say root and the root will be math ceiling. So I'm going to make sure that I always round up. I can always use math and let's say square root function. And I'm just going to get a square root of that number. Now, let me just console log this root just so you can see what's happening. And we have the square root obviously here. In this case would be three for eight. Then we have four, 11 and 12. And the idea is like this. So if we have, let's say a number, and if we take a square root of that number, and if we iterate from our case, number two, all the way up to that square root, but the difference would be that we do need to set this equal to the square root. So I'm going to write equal to whatever number we're getting. And if we're still cannot find here that we can divide evenly this number by the numbers between two and equal to the square root. So if we do our loop from two all the way up to the square root and we still see that we don't get any reminders of zero, that means that also this number is not prime. So as you can see, in our case, we're saving what? Well, in the first case, we were iterating from two all the way to 126. Now, in this case, we're just iterating from two all the way up to the 12. And we can check it the same way because we can tell, okay, so if none of the numbers between two all the way up to the 12, we were able to divide 127 and get a even result, meaning we wouldn't get any kind of remainder, then obviously this number wouldn't be a prime. And in this case, it is a prime. So that's the reason why we're returning the true. So two possible ways how we can solve it. And this is how we solve this challenge.